Uh, in this video, I'm continue with the analysis set out uh, by Loeffler and Posh. Uh, they have a very uh, practical uh, textbook here with uh, Excel and VBA included, uh, VBA code, and some data sets. So I uh, check, I look at the Excel results, and then I set up in R and R Studio, and I compare the results and also I'm, I'm interested in the um, analysis. So this starting point here would be, uh, just to recap, we already used uh, an ordinary least squares model uh, where we took the data proposed by Loeffler and Posh and then we ran a Linest, an ordinary least squares estimation here and we examined the effect of uh, working capital and retained earnings to total assets, EBIT to total assets, market equity to total liabilities, and sales to total assets, and we tried to predict a binary outcome of zero where there is no bankruptcy and one where there is bankruptcy um, for different uh, debtors. Uh, we ran that output, we found that there was a low R squared, not surprisingly, that would be quite typical. And we also examined the fit here uh, in terms of our result. The maximum value in terms of the fit was 0 0.54 and the minimum was negative 0 0.11. And um, in this type of modeling, normally would we would like to generate uh, probabilities about uh, financial distress and we're getting a number that's not really close to one one would be kind of a uh, where we're quite cer very certain 100 percent certain of bankruptcy we're not even close to that and also importantly the minimum value cuts through the zero boundary and we shouldn't get negative probabilities uh, so ordinarily squares is not a linear type model is not really uh, appropriate here for modeling credit risk and making uh, predictions and uh, generating probabilities. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, we did it with Linest and we verified the results in our studio and the results tally, which is good, but otherwise the model is not appropriate. Uh, that then would suggest we should use a nonlinear model and um, an appropriate model in that case would be a logit model. So using the same data set again and uh, being prompted by the setup established in the textbook outlined uh, in logit in Loeffler and Posh, we can run a logit. Now this logit is based on code uh, developed uh, by. Loughlin and Posh, so I can't really re reveal that, but I do encourage people to buy the textbook. Uh, what I can do is take the data set and s estimate a logit model in R and just compare results. Okay, so uh, using a user defined function developed by Loughlin and Posh, uh, logit normally doesn't exist in Excel as a function, but here it does. Uh, here we do have a logit, logit, and we can run, we can take the uh, C2 to C4, so C2, in fact I can just copy, perhaps that's the easiest here, if that's not a, okay, so maybe I can just copy, and it copy, and then equal to, and then paste, and, okay, and then uh, we can hit return, and we get a set of values here, one set of value to get all the output we must uh, identify the target area we want to populate, come up here to the command line and then control shift enter, control shift enter, so let's try that, control shift enter, And control shift enter then populates. Uh, so we have coefficients for beta within the logit model, standard errors, t values, p value, uh, and then a pseudo r squared, 
and then maximum likelihood, log likelihood, uh, test, and p-value. Okay, now we can uh, compare that against uh, our studio code. So um, let's run the same uh, estimation, but again, a logit model. Now, interestingly, perhaps uh, we should say something here. In the logit model, we don't load it in exactly the same way. When we try to develop the model fit, the default probability, uh, the we we must use the function as set out in in a logit framework. So, for instance, uh, if we want to in the logit model, uh, we use uh, one. We take the coefficients. In fact, we might look at here. We take one over one plus the exponential of negative the coefficients times the respective variables. So instead of in before we just took if you like a matrix or a vector of the coefficients and multiplied by the independent variables and then we added to that the uh, the constant. But in this instance, to get the model fit, it has to be 1 over, because it's a logit model, it's 1 over 1 plus the exponential of negative the coefficients times the, the logit coefficients times the independent variables. Okay, uh, and that has the effect of ensuring that we never exceed 1 or go below zero. So for instance, if we make this negative 1000, we sh should still remain at zero. If we make it negative eight, go back to negative eight, negative eight, then, uh, and if we put this value at 1000, we shouldn't exceed one. It will remain within the boundaries. Okay, so that that's one of the benefits here of the exponential model we don't go outside the boundary of zero and one that's very convenient if we're trying to develop estimates of probability exceeding one is not really an option going below zero having negative probabilities is not an option okay so we go back to our model here for a moment and um we might just examine uh, what's the maximum so what's the maximum value here so we could take equal to maximum open brackets and take the entire model fit and we see 99 nine. and then for the minimum shouldn't be negative again this is just a test to ensure that we don't breach uh, just these minor qualitative issues uh, while significant I suppose qualitative issues